this can be used for all sorts of materials. Felt's particularly good because it's a fibrous material that you can poke holes in easily. Because if something... Something's going to be coming out of there. And imagine I've got a feather attached to this. Now, wire is a really good way of attaching feathers onto your hat, okay? But it's getting the wire onto the feather to start with, which there are some, sometimes with feathers you can, with some hot glue gun, kind of insert the wire into the spine. Um, or like with an ostrich spine, um, it sometimes has that groove in there that it can be inserted into. But glue isn't really that strong, even hot glue gun or something like that. Super glue is a very brittle glue, so it's not you it's it's not a brilliant glue to use for a lot of trimming jobs just because it's so brittle it'll crack very easily. Rubbery glues, things like Yoohoo glue, um, which is this one, and hot glue gun tends to be quite good because they've got flexibility to them. Fabric glue is a fine kind of for lighter weight things um, and things. So, so you see there, the wire's gone up quite nicely in there. Okay. But a lot of the time, and I'm very annoyed, I've managed to lose my samples. I'm going to make another sample, which is quite good because I'll show you how you can do it. Is you sew, using your wire stitch, you sew the wire onto the feather. Okay? Now, if you're stitching into something like that, it's quite hard. It's a bit of a pain. <laughs> I only found out this method when I started teaching here and a student told me about it. So all those years of thimbles mm -hmm. and pliers trying to stitch through the ostrich feathers, particularly when you're doing a hat, which is what, like swan or something, and you've got about this. needle makes the job much easier. Oh no, stay, stay humble. <coughs> okay, right, I'll just keep the match going. So, you heat up a thickish needle. So I'm using regular embroidery tapestry needle here. This isn't so good because it's in the box. I don't know if it is actually. Yeah, it's not really that good. You heat it up and you push it through. I don't think it's hot enough. Oh, yeah. It, it kind of burns through it. I don't know if you can smell slightly burning hair because basically the spine is, is like our nails. It's, it's very solidified hair. So it makes a hole for you that you can then stitch through. Okay. I won't do them all. You would do, if you're going to be adding a wire, stitching a wire on, dependent on the weight of the feather and the size of the feather, you don't want just a couple of centimetres, you want a good bit like the overlaps on the back of your hats. You want at least a good five or six centimetres there. Let's say it just depends on the size and the weight of it. Okay. So you would do enough holes there for that stitch on. So imagine you're Feather. So you've got your, your, your trim, whether it be your feather or whatever, and you've got a good bit of wire sticking out the bottom. That then works its way through the hat. It works its way through the hat. So you would make a hole with a small pair of scissors or a gradle instrument, an old. AWL instrument um, just to kind of open it up. Okay. Now, if I was just to bend this, I'm going to bend this against the base of the hat. If I was just going to bend that in one direction, what would happen to that feather? You can see it's happening now. It's swinging. 
It's not swinging that way because the wire is like that. So you need to make sure the wire goes like around a corner or a spiral shape to, to stop it going that way and that way. Okay? And then that would get sewn on to the inside base using your wire stitch. So this corner or this spiral here. And then you would cover it with like a circle of felt or fabric or something to just get rid of the harsh and stuff. <laughs> Any questions before we move on? Did you say when you when you make the hole through the feather? Yeah. With the wire. Yeah. Did you wind the wire down the feather or did you stitch it on? Stitched it on. Stitched it on, yeah. But so there's various ways. If this is something and say I'm kind of touching on the tip of the iceberg with a lot of these things. If you end up working a lot with feathers or etc. etc., um, then we can talk about things in detail. <coughs> so they'd really be used for the smaller, smaller feathers you were sticking on there. That it would have probably been used, used to Yoohoo, yeah. It's a good rubbery glue, it dries quite quickly. Mm -hmm. But the one thing about Yoohoo is it gets quite stringy as you're working mm -hmm. with it. But you can, if you work with, want to work with smaller amounts, just use a pin mm -hmm. and just apply it with a pin. But it's getting it's getting used to it as well, knowing when it's going to string and things like that. Speaking of gluing things on, he was gluing individual feathers on there, which is quite a lot of work. This is a really, it's the only example I can find in a box, I don't know if you examples are, it's a very tatty one. But this is called a feather pad. So you can buy them. You can across the across on it and also have them for that. Ah, wonderful. So Barnet and Lawson is the place to be for your heather pads. So it means that you can attach feathers onto your hats much, much quicker than yeah. sticking them on individually. Because you buy them already glued onto like a little cotton patch. And you get all sorts of feathers, all sorts of colours. This one I think has been dyed up. Sometimes you can dye them, sometimes if they've been made quite poorly, the glue shows through. But the way he was doing it, for the, for the it had to do it that way for that. Yeah. 